So, I, I would completely agree with, with Dr. Castamont about the, the plane that we have to use. Here we can see some, some draw on the face of, of our patient. We, we draw the, the facial artery that ran along the nasolabial fold, and then you can see here the angular artery and the lateral nasal artery that we saw at the, with, with the dissection of, of the cadaver head. And we can note that all the uh, vascular system of, of the nose is an important anastomotic conjunction between the external carotid and internal carotid system. So for this reason, it's a really dangerous <coughs> area because we can create not only necrosis of the skin if we inject into the blood vessel, but we can uh, create also problem of bleeding of our patient because the bolus of the hyaluronic acid can mm. run in a retrograde way and uh, uh, create an embolization of retinal artery and create a, a dramatic injury of, of retina with big problem for our, for our patient. For this reason, I think that when we treat this area, we need to use always cannula. Also, if we are very expert, we, we, we need to inject with cannula, and I prefer to inject usually in a deep plane, an anatomical deep plane, that means pre-periosteal pre or pre-cartilage uh, plane uh, always underneath this mass, this mass uh, plane of the nose that usually is uh, described as the, 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 muscle, uh, the nasal muscle. Uh, plane. <clears throat> so in this patient, uh, I ask if we can show the lateral view of the nose. She has a, a, a little uh, hump here that is quite strange for Asian people, but usually they don't have hump, usually they have a concave uh, dorsum of the nose. So we will tr start to treat the upper part of, of, the, of the dorsum and we try to uh, put uh, in a move in a, in a cranial direction the radix on the nose. Not too much because if we do this too much, we can do a too high length of, of the dorsal of the nose. And we'll do this by, by a cannula. First of all, we start doing the entry point injection this way and then we okay remove this okay it, it, through this entry point we introduce other cannula and we reach the bone the nasal bone and then we introduce other cannula very slowly. Be careful to be along the medial line and we reach the, the radix of, of, of the nose. And so, so Dr. Fundaro, this is a 25 gauge two inch. Yes, yeah? it's, a, it's a 25 gauge because I think that we have to use this gauge because a, a 27 or a 30 gauge is like a needle. It can penetrate the vessel, and when a cannula penetrates the vessel, you 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 not are able to to ask from this vessel. So it's more dangerous than than, than a needle. Yeah, I totally agree. And also, you need the rigidity and the tensile strength in the steel to be able to penetrate through to this area. Sorry, I, I, I didn't. You need you need the rigidity, the strength of the steel to get to this area. Yes, yeah. I, I prefer to use uh, uh, strength cannula. Because uh, I don't like, I, I, I like that the cannula go where I want and not where I want the cannula. And sometimes exactly. with weak cannula, you can have a strange direction of, of, of your cannula. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You want to show where I am with, uh, in the cadaver head? Yeah, sure. So now over to Philippe, please. Can you hear us? We just want to see exactly where Dr. Fundaro yes, is now with the tip of his cannula. Okay, Dr. Fondaro is on the very good plane because, you know, 
look, it's this perfect plane is the deep plane near the periosteum and the perichondrum. You see my cannula here, it, it's just below the nasal mass, below the muscles, below the vessels. So if you here with a cannula, there's no risk, you're safe. You see the nasal bump, the nasal bone, the nasal cartilage, uh, the lateral cartilage of the nose, the limit between the bone and the cartilage, and in that plane there's a continuity between the periosteum and the perichondrum, and if you here in the sub smas the sub-nasal smas plane, there's no vascular risk. Thank you. That's really clear to us. I just want to ask one question, Philippe. Sometimes we see injectors, they use a, a needle to inject the glabella depression, so the nasal bone retrusion, especially in Asia. What do you think, what's your opinion on using a needle in this area, on the, in the midline? If you inject in the same plane, then you in the midline and you inject deep. If you inject deep, there's no real risk. Look, I inject here the deep area with the product. You see the product. You're below the SMAS. So you stay in the midline and you near the periosteum or the, uh, or the perichondrum. And in my opinion, you can do it. I did it. I did it without any problem. You're safer with a cannula. But if you stay in the midline near and, and deep near the bone and near the cartilage, there's no vascular risk. You see? That's excellent. Thank you. So really, the key is to be in the right injection plane. So now, uh, Dr. Fondaro, now back to you, please. Okay, so now we can start to inject our filler. I'm using EWAR volume. That is a, is a filler with a very good uh, elastic modulus that can uh, give uh, us a good correction of, this, uh, of the dorsum of this patient. Uh, usually, I, I do this with, with, uh, with my finger. I pinch. The, the dorsum, but in this case you, you will not see nothing, so I, I don't do this and uh, I start to inject my product very slowly. Dr. Fundaro, you know, you mentioned the radix point before. Is there a calculation or some kind of a level at which you think the radix should go to? Uh, yes, uh, I think that it's very important to don't put this radix too, too high because if, if you put it too high, it means that uh, we create the so-called Greek nose that is yeah. a very long, very long nose. And so I think that we have to put our new radix not higher than the uh, interpupillar uh, uh, level or slightly higher, but not too much. And of course, it, this depends also uh, from the race of, 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 uh, of, of our patient. Usually. Uh, Asian patients don't like to high radix of, of, of the nose. Excellent. Thank you very much. So just look at how Dr. Fundaro is retaining the product with his non-dominant index finger and thumb so that he's shaping the material as the product is being injected. And that means that there's no lateral spread of the material. That's very important because otherwise, if you have a wide nasal bridge, then you can look like the characters from the movie Avatar. You've seen that before, right? Yeah, yes. in fact, this is very important because we are injecting our product in a loose areolar tissue. So if we don't care about this, we can spread laterally the, the product and, and lost lot of our uh, our uh, volume argumentation. Okay, I need. I think that she need a little more, and then we can show the lateral view of of the nose of the patient. Now, what's, what kind of volumes are you using here to rebuild a, uh, a depressed nasal bridge? The, the, uh, usually, I prefer to don't use too much volume, if, if, uh, too much filler. If I have to inject too much filler, I prefer to do my, uh, the correction in, in two steps, okay? Because I don't want stress 
the, the vascular system of, of the nose that is a weak vascular system, especially when I, I have to treat the, the, the tip of the nose where the, the vascularization is, is, is very weak. So usually I suggest to don't use more than one ml for global correction of, uh, of the nose. If you need more, you can do in a second, in a second step. Absolutely. You know, my rule for treating this area with volumes is that if you, uh, if the audience, you can feel the skin at the glabella region. It's very loose and therefore it's relatively low risk and therefore it can take more volume. As you come down to the nasal bridge here, it becomes tighter and therefore you use less volume. And at the nasal tip, it's very thick and adherent sebaceous uh, skin. So therefore, the volumes have to be very low because I believe there's a potential for compression. What's your view on that, uh, Dr. Fundaro? Yes, uh, I, I agree with you that we, we have to pay a lot of attention when we treat the, the, the tip of, uh, of the nose because and, and, the, and the volume of, of filler that we can inject is, is low. And for this reason, for example, I prefer, prefer to start to correct before the columella that can give us a, a good uh, rotation of, of the tip and only if it's absolutely necessary, I, I treat the, the tip of, of the nose. Okay, excellent. So just tell me, do you want to do another injection in the nose or are you going to move straight no, to if the... You, if you want to, I, I would like to show you the, the, the treatment of the columella. That would be very nice. Okay. And then what we can do is we can have a look at the result of this region. Oh, yes. Yeah, and yes. then we can move to the peribuccal region. Okay, I tried to, to show you... I don't know if you, you, you can see that we have... Here was the, our original radix, and now we move it here, and we improve the, the, the length of dorsum, and we improve the, um, the, 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 the hump of, of, of dorsum. Can okay. we just have a look at the patient in, this, in the side profile? Uh, yes, I'm trying to find the right camera. Right angle. Okay, perfect. Okay, perhaps... Uh, it's Sorry. difficult, it's difficult. Her neck okay. is no, a no, no, stiff, no, no, don't move, don't change the camera. So we can, yeah, we can. this is nice. Okay. This is nice now. Okay. So the upper part of the dorsal hump is much, much better. Yeah. So this is excellent. And yeah. how and much did you use for this? Uh, 0 0.6, 0 okay. 0.7. Okay, so quite, an, quite an amount. So n n now we, we treat the, 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 the columella and we create again another entry point. Okay, and now we finish our product, yeah. treating the columella. And do you use any anesthesia for this with the patient? Yes, I have done a drop of lidocaine okay. here and here. Okay, perfect. So you, 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 you see that the, the patient this way doesn't feel too much, too much pain. When I do this in my office, I always leave this to the last procedure because if I start with this, they probably would walk out of the door and not let me continue. Yeah. Okay, I reached the bone and now I inject my filler between the two medial crews of, of the other cartilage. In this way, we strength the, the columella and we create a rotation of, of, of the tip. Nice. So you've got and a cephalic rotation there. Is there a situation where you would advance that uh, cannula all the way to the nasal spine? Yes, I, I reach with the cannula of okay. the na nasal spine because yeah. the, the first injection is at the level of the foot of the, of the uh, medial crus. And then when I, I withdrawing, I'm withdrawing the, uh, the cannula, I continue the injection because I want to increase the strength of the, of, the, of the columella in this way. Yeah, we can see very beautifully an example of an improvement of the nasal frontal angle yes. and better uh, cephalic rotation of the nasal that tip. Camera? So congratulations. Okay, now, you, just you, see, you see now that yeah, we, we change the, the projection of, of, of the tip. It's beautiful, okay. well done. Yeah. We're just going to go to Philippe now so that he can show us exactly where that tip of the cannula is. And also, Philippe, please, if you can make reference to any risk here at the nasal spine and within the columella. Thank you, Raj. So, 
with the cannula here, you're safe. If you use, like you said before, a 25 gauge cannula. If you use smaller cannula, it's like needles. So you have the same risk. With this kind of cannula, it's impossible to enter this kind of artery, you know, because it's too big. So this plane is not safe with a needle, but safe with a 25 gauge cannula. And then you can open the angle between the lip and the columnar area. You can obtain a cephalic rotation of the tip of the nose and elevate the nose on the profile view. So this is, in this indication, the best way, the best technique, a cannula in this subcutaneous plane and 25 gauge. The risk, you saw it previously. Previously here you saw the little branch for the columnar area. And you see on the superficial plane the different branches in the tip of the nose with the communication between the right and the left side. But you see that the vessels are very superficial. So if you really want a needle, if you really want to inject the tip with a needle, never, never inject too superficially because you can have a skin ischemia or you can make a vessels injury. If you want to inject with the tip, with the needle, the tip stay deep near the cartilage. But it's very difficult to fill it with the needle because it's easy with the bone because you will touch the bone and you will fill the bone with the tip of the needle. But with the cartilage, it's very difficult to stay on the good plane. So that's why for the tip, I think the cannula is safe. If you really want to do it, cross the nasal mass and inject here in the, you know, deep and the sub mass plane. But danger. Danger because it's very difficult to, sometimes the skin is very thin and it's very difficult to be sure that you will not cross some vessels. So cannula, I think, is the best. Thank you, Philippe. I would completely agree with that. And I think the whole point of this, these kind of events with medical education is to teach efficacy and safety in the best possible way. And I think what you've seen there, everybody, is a very safe and effective way to treat the nose. So for those of you that were unsure, I think this is the example to follow. So thank you very much. Now, that we're just going to finish now with the peribuccal injection. So if we can get ready to inject the lips, or yeah. is, it, is it the perioral area? Yeah, yes, we plan to inject the, the lip. And in this case, we use uh, Iwara Classic that has a, a, a lower elastic model compared to the EUR volume, and I think that it is better for, for lip treatment. Of course, usually Asian patient doesn't need a big lip augmentation. I think that they usually need a definition, increased the definition of the contour of the, of the, the vermilion, especially in the, in the, central, in the central part of, uh, uh, of, of, of the lips. And in this case, I have to say that uh, when I treat the lip, I use the, the needle. I, I have to say that I'm not so happy because I have a bad experience with the ischemic injuries during a, a touch-up of, uh, of, of, of a lip because you know that the, the lips are really ha has a very, very high vascularization. So uh, I, I, I want to use the needle because my injection must be superficial, must be uh, intradermal, and it's impossible to do an intradermal uh, injection with, with cannula. And, okay, uh, we can do this type of injection mm -hmm. We, we will inject our filler along the margin of the vermilion very superficially because in, in this area the, 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 the margin of the vermilion is, is shape and so if you want to create a shape margin we have to be superficial. 
And I think that's a very important point here about depth control. The, um, the superior labial artery is generally running in the submuscular plane, so underneath the orbicularis oris muscle. And therefore, if you inject underneath the muscle, you have a higher chance of injuring the vessel. Plus also, when you're at the vermilion border, it's inferior to the level of the artery. You can see where Philippe is now. His needle is below or inferior to the level of the artery. So those are two very important factors, is the height of the injection on the lip and also the depth of injection. So well done, thank you. Yes, and uh, we can complete our treatment increasing the, the angle of uh, the, the cupid's uh, uh, art in this way with a little bolus, interdermal little bolus here. And if we want to increase the, the uh, rotation of the lip, very careful, we can inject inside a, another little quantity of, of filler that will create a, an, a rotation of a superior, superior lip. Okay. I, yes, I but used that, that, that point could be a little bit more uh, risky. Yeah. Because uh, we are near the, 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 the labial artery. Absolutely. Exactly. Yes. And uh, I think that in, in this type of lip, we don't need to do too much because uh, the, the volume are, are, are good. We need only to, to give a, a good definition of, uh, of uh, the margin of, of the vermilion and create a slight uh, rotation of, of the superior uh, lip. And that's the key, I think. The reason why that looks so beautiful is because you haven't generated anterior projection. You've merely caused eversion and rotation of the lip, which gives more mucosal height and therefore improves the geometric parameters of the beauty of the lip. Yes, in fact, you can note that this lady has a natural bump yes. in the central part of, 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 of the lip, so we don't need to create more bump in this area. We only to try to improve the rotation of the, of the lip. So I think that we are running out of time now. So I'd like to thank you, uh, both of you, for a wonderful injection. Also, also to Philippe for a really fabulous dissection. But you know, more importantly to the patient, because I think this is the two most painful parts of the face. And I don't know what you've given her, by the way, but she looks like she's very calm indeed. So congratulations to her no, as well. I, she, she, she was... Uh, oh, we lost. She, <laughs> okay, so thank you very much anyway. Excellent, well done, well done. Anesthesia for this reason. <laughs> okay, thank you.